Hello, my name is Horkon and welcome back to another little tutorial on the Empress Effects Zoya, the absolutely amazing patchable synthesizer in a little box. Now, uh, recently I made a tutorial about how to snap to scale and that was very particularly in the context of using a sequencer and also that particular patch um, also only let you set the note values on one track of the sequencer and then it did the octaves on a different track so it's not very useful a method for general use even though it sort of mimics a normal hardware sequencer which was sort of my idea when i made that um, recently on the uh, zoya uses facebook page somebody asked about snapping to scale and so I decided, uh, after reading that, that I should make a patch that was more a universal snap-to-scale patch. Um, and in doing so, I decided to make it um, have uh, defined the scale, a sort of a redefinable scale, rather. Um, so I gave it 12 volume modules here, which are the it's a scale definition. So these 12 modules... Uh, allow you to create up to a 12 note scale of course you could add more you could have a at least easily you could do a 16 note scale if you want to be fancy um, and you can have fewer notes if you like but I thought I'd just make a general patch now with 12 notes um, so that you could actually make a chromatic scale if you want to and that's what it already does on the Zoya. Uh, but of course, what you also could do with this patch is you could do a different tuning. Um, and you could, because these value modules here, of course, I've set them to notes now for a minor pentatonic scale, which is one of my favorites. Um, but of course, you could go in here and instead of using a standard note value, you could set a frequency. And so you could retune it to a non-standard tuning, theoretically, uh, with exactly the same patch. Um, I'm probably going to do some other tutorials on that particular theme later. I have some other ideas for that. Um, right, so to start with here, I'll just actually go through this. Um, so we have value modules for a um, A minor pentatonic scale. So uh, it starts here with the lowest note in A0. Uh, C1, D1, E1, G1. And then the rest here I just fill in with A1 for the next note up in the scale. Um, and these value modules are then sent on to, you can see the first two here, these modules down here light up. Uh, and those are comparators, but I'll get back to that in a moment. First, you need a, um, a value input, I suppose, a starting point, a value that you are wanting to um, snap to a scale. Uh, and in my case, I just made a little, let's show you the, the sound page here. So I just made a little um, sequencer here that runs through a chromatic scale. But now, of course, this is actually, so I'll just show you the note values, those A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, etc. So just a chromatic scale. But it now snaps to A minor pentatonic. So, um, so that's where the note value comes from, and, and this sends its uh, note output to, uh, let's see, this module up here, which is just a value module. And I've also used this to set an offset as well um, to make it a higher frequency. Right, so the output of this, now this just to show the workings of how the snapping works now. The output of this goes to an in switch. And if you've seen any of my previous tutorials, you know exactly what an in switch does because I use switches in almost every single tutorial now. 
But in InSwitch, what it does is it takes a number of different inputs. You can select how many, up to 16 in, in one switch. And they can have different values. They can have different, of course, be connected as uh, inputs for different values from somewhere else as well. And this one you see, it says 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, etc. And those are the values that are sent out of the in switch. And how it decides which value is sent out is based on the channel selector. And how the channel selector on the switch works, it takes the CV range from 0 to 1 and it divides it equally between the uh, number of channels on the switch. In this case, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 channels. And so it's quite easy to calculate. It uh, just triggers on the first channel is selected when the uh, channel selector gets a CV value between 0 and 0 0.1. Once it gets to 0 0.1 exactly, that's when it goes up to channel 2. And then it's 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 3, etc., etc. It's uh, quite simple uh, once you have 10 channels. OK. Uh, and of course, the reason for doing this, uh, in order for us to snap to a scale, we need to take the input and first we remove the octaves. And of course, the Zoya is very helpful when it comes to this because um, it gives us, um, if we look at the, uh, the note values here, the first decimal is the octave. So it says 0.3, which means it's now everything is in the well, fourth octave really because the first one is zero. 0 0.0 to 0.1 and that makes it quite easy to work with a snapping to scale for instance and also it makes it easy to transpose uh, and other things that uh, work with uh, frequency values so we want to remove the first decimal so that we can work with the last three digits because those are the ones that define the actual note like an a or an, an e or a d so <clears throat> The output of this um, is sent to the channel selector of the uh, in switch. And because now it's 0 0.3, between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, which means that the channel selector will select the, um, the channel that gives us a 0 0.3 output. So it selects channel 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 0.3 and it sends out 0 0.3. And the idea is that we take this value and we subtract 0 0.3, and this in switch helps us get the value that we are meaning to subtract. So how do we subtract? Well, we have to first make it into a negative value. An in switch doesn't allow negative values, um, unless maybe you can use an input that has negative value. I haven't tried that. But the easiest way to change a positive to a negative value is uh, with the obvious inverter module. So we send the output of this in switch to an inverter. And what an inverter does, it takes its input and it reverses the, um, if it is 0 0.3, it makes it minus 0 0.3. If it had been minus 0 0.3 to start with, it would then become 0.3. But in this case, it's 0 0.3 and it becomes minus 0 0.3 okay and that is then added to this value module here as you can see the patch there and that is also connected to the original note value input so we take this value here 0 0.3 something and we add the offset or the uh, the subtracted uh, number here so we take this number minus 0 0.3 in here and then we get this output so that's the same as the previous one but with the note value subtracted from the octave okay so <clears throat> the octaves have been removed okay what's next where is this connected? It isn't connected to anything on this page. I'll just show you now. So if you look at the eye here, it's connected to lots of comparators. Um, 
And now we get back to the other page. So these value modules, they send the, if you see this, these two up here, they send the values to the middle pad of these comparators down here. Now, how a comparator works is it takes, it has two inputs, uh, known as the positive and the negative input. If the positive input is higher, I think it is equal or higher than the negative input, the module outputs a one, an on stage. So we've taken our scale definition values and connected them to the negative inputs of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve comparator modules. So all these have the connected to the scale definitions, and of course the last ones here now are just 0 0.1. And the positive inputs of all these comparators are connected to the value that we created on the first page, which is the input note value minus the first decimal, minus the octave decimal, which is the value that we got from uh, on this value module here. Okay, I hope that is quite clear. Um, so what happens then is that as the the sequencer goes through the uh, I actually see it quite clearly here. Goes through the sequence, it sort of triggers the comparator modules one by one until all of them gets triggered at the end because that's the uh, it snaps to the highest note in the in the scale so first the let's have a look now i should just play the sound And what do we do with the comparator outputs? Um, let's do the next bit there. So, and they go to a value module, and you can see that, interestingly, of course, it has a connection value of 8.33. Now, let's find this value module. And this is down here on the first page. So this value module gets its input from all the comparators. And as you can see, the connection value is at 8.33% for all of them. And there's a reason for this. Um, and the reason is that um, as each of them is triggered in turn, we want them to select a channel on this switch here. And this is another in switch. And this is the in switch that will send out the new note value. So each of these pads here have got a value that corresponds to the scale. And these ones, because I want to be able to redefine the scale easily, these ones don't have the scale definition in them. You could actually go in here and, and dispense completely with the value modules. You could. But um, um, this is a way to make it more universal and also more easily editable because the value modules also need to work with the comparators um, because these are inputs, not outputs, so you can't take these values somewhere else. So we'd have to uh, set the values in comparators manually if you want to do it to, without making it redefinable. So in a way, it's actually easier to use value modules as a definition and then send the value from these each of these 12 value modules that define the scale are sent to each of these 12 channels on the in switch. So the scale definition, the definition of these values are from the scale definition of value modules. And again, an in switch, which means that it takes, it has 12 channels in this case of inputs, a channel selector, and a a single output that gets the value from the channel that is selected by the channel selector.
and the channel selector gets its trigger, its CV value input from this value module, which we know is gets 8.33% from each of the comparators. If you take 1 and divide by 12, you get 8.33. And how the channel selects its how the switch selects its channel is by taking the range from 0 to 1 and divide by 12, which means the first one is selected when the channel selector has a an input of 0 0.0833. So when one of the comparators is triggered, it is still on channel 1. When two comparators are triggered, it goes to channel 2. When three are triggered, it goes to channel 3, etc. All the way up to 12. So quite a simple principle and it does work rather well. So what happens next? Let's follow the chain here. So we've got the output here, um, and this is the new note value. This takes its values from the scale definition, and so this is a new note value, and then it is moved to this value module over here. And this value module does two things. It takes this value, which is a new value, but remember we removed the octave digital uh, digit, sorry, not digital. <laughs> the octave did it in the beginning, so we have to add that back on again. So the same number that was removed earlier from the first in switch is then added back in. So it goes to the, this value here goes to the inverter, as you remember from the beginning, to be removed from the input value. And it also goes to this value module to be added at the end of the whole workings of the snap to scale system. And that is our output note value. And that's the one we want to send to uh, whatever means we have of producing sound. So in this case, um, I have an oscillator here. I'll just go through uh, quickly the sound setup. An oscillator set to triangle it goes into a VCA, and the VCA is triggered by an ADSR envelope here that is itself triggered by uh, an LFO here, which sends its output to the gate here. That's a square LFO, by the way. Um, and so that output there goes to the VCA, the amplification rate. The output of the VCA goes to, I have some effect modules as well here, or only one actually. Uh, it goes into this plate reverb. And the output from the plate reverb goes to the, uh, let's see, oh, to the audio output left and right. So quite a simple, simple setup um, sound wise. And uh, oh yes, one more thing. There's one more thing actually because uh, of the way the, um, the scale snap takes a little bit of calculation time, which means that this gate is also the one, the, the LFO here, which triggers the ADSR, also triggers the sequencer that gives the original note values that are now sent to the, uh, to the system for snapping to scale. But because of all the comparators, and all those things taking a little bit of time, if you send those values directly without any delays, you get a little bit of artifacts. Uh, so the LFO here triggers not the ADSR, it doesn't trigger the ADSR directly, it triggers the sequencer directly, so that would happen first, and then it goes into the delay, and the output of the delay triggers the ADSR envelope. So the envelope, the ADSR envelope is triggered after the sequencer by a length of time defined by the delay module. And that avoids the artifacts completely. But of course, it does add a little bit of delay, which may or may not be a problem, um, depending on how you are working. So and let's just see what that sounds like if I reduce the delay now. So we've got a 9.33 milliseconds now. Six point sixty seven. 
seven. it now. The beginning of the sequence there. Let's take it down to zero. So it is almost gone at 6.67 milliseconds as well, but it's, it's there just very faintly. So <clears throat> that's one way to avoid that problem, which works fine as long as all your sound production is, or sound generation is done within the Zoya itself, of course. Um, if you're starting to sync things with other gear, that could cause some problems, but um, that is an issue that you might have anyway <laughs> with, with things trying to sync up. Um, so yeah, just a little little trick there to um, to make things work together. So there you have it. And this is something that can be expanded upon, uh, of course. Um, one thing you might conceive of doing, for instance, is to define different scales with different value modules and then switch between them uh, in some fashion. Um, uh, and also it's possible to define um, scales that are not part of our normal standard tuning um, because you can just go in and adjust these values beyond note value quite precisely as well. Um, and of course to do precise uh, control on the encoder, you can hold the shift button and use the encoder at the same time. So that's a way to do that. So I hope you found that useful and something that you may be able to use in your own patches. Um, if you did enjoy it, please uh, leave a like, uh, share, comment, subscribe, all those things that people do on YouTube. And uh, also, please let me know if you, if you did find it useful and also especially if you use it in your own patches. Um, since this is a relatively large patch, I will also put this on patch storage uh, for you to download and, um, and have a tinker with if you like. And there we have it. That's your snap to any scale patch with any CV value input from zero to one. So quite a useful little thing. So thanks for watching. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you again in my next tutorial, uh, whichever that will be on. Um, um, I haven't decided yet what I'm doing next, but I'll be doing... I've got a few th ideas um, lined up that I'm going to be working on when I have the time uh, the next few days. So um, probably it won't be too long until I have another video out. Um, so yes, uh, again, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye for now. Bye bye.